Greetings, durable dads, brothers from different mothers, and my sisters from different misters. Today I've got for you another five reasons why Primed Up in this one is a little bit more esoteric, but bear with me. It's why dad supports or those who work with dads need new lingo. Okay, coming from a place where being supporting dads is, is my meat and potatoes. It's what I've been doing for years. I also work in an industry that is that touches on social work and the nonprofit environment on the daily. Uh, and, and it has its own set of language. It has its own set of protocols. It also has its own set of biases, be them unconscious or conscious. And there's a meta narrative at work. I, I scan the parenting pages and, and, and stuff in the, uh, the, the manosphere and we're all really aware of what's going on and we articulate it, but it tends to always have a real hard edge to it. And uh, I can tell that when working with somebody in a social work environment or, or dealing with people, a new language needs to be transformed. They use their own language. And those of you who support dads, my fellows, will totally understand that that you know going off and saying it's not fair or, or or being angry at the system or the language being used it's not going away and it's not going to help by being incendiary in any way however it, it helps to have some agreed upon catchphrases if we're going to say okay we're going to use certain language that denotes dad um okay let's do it Let's agree on something. Let's let's find our own uh, dialect, so to speak, and and something that can plug into the meta narrative. Because you know what, it's the language currency. It's the currency being used currently, and and we have to operate within it, whether we like it or not. How fair we may think it is, or how not inclusive it may be towards dads in general. It doesn't matter. Let's use some language, but you know what? Let's determine it. So I'm going to give you five reasons why we should change up our language. Let's go to the wall. Number one, what do we call us individuals or individuals that are pro dad, so to speak? What do we call ourselves? Obviously, chauvinists is not going to work because that has a negative connotation that's been it's been killed a long time ago. We can't use that. Well, there's a label of chauvinist pig that immediately comes to mind. It is, however, the analog to feminist, but it's not going to work. So what are we going to call that? Um, <clears throat> there's a content creator that calls herself the Dadvocate. Fantastic name. I wish I could have taken it, but it's long gone. However, father's advocacy is a really great way of expressing, or dad advocate, is a great way of expressing kind of what we do. There's, it's, it has no connotations of being or exclusive of women and moms, right? It's just for dads. And we're obviously pro moms. That's, that's necessary. I'm pro both parents. It's, uh, but you know what? My, my walk, my experience, uh, my lived experience allows me a perspective and the fact that I'm a dad myself gives me license to a degree to be able to talk to dads. I can't necessarily talk to moms because I, I don't have the contextual uh, layers there, okay? Some aspects of parenting obviously don't change between the, the sexes or between a mom and a dad. However, you know what I'm talking about. It's easier because I'm a dad to talk to other dads. So I'm a father's advocate and, a, and I engage in father's advocacy and support. If you can think of a cooler name, drop it for me. I'd be more than happy to hear. Two, what are our objectives? Where do we want to see dads? What, do we, what word do we want to use for that space? I have my ideas. Okay, so I see dads as equal, equal and valid parents. 
okay, as equal as a mom. Um, the evidence is in. Males and females are equally capable of being good parents. Yes, there might there's there's a bond that's created by women by carrying the baby, but you know what? There's there's reams of evidence of a evolutionary or a, a biological change that comes over dads when you when you bond. Okay, so and and some parents are better at being parents than others, right? Some people, and the thing is that's not exclusive to a gender or a sex. So I would say dads are, I wanna see dads in a space where we're equally valued as a parent. And that means that mom's work has to be valued <clears throat> in order for that to even hold. But I see us as being dads, being in a space where we're an equal, we share parenting or the duties. And if that, we happen to be the best suited for that duty, we'll take more of it. Okay, that's fine. It's a discussion between two parents on how that's going to work, but, and, and we're interchangeable. So, and I want to be socially in a place where as dad is just seen as a parent, and it's just dad, mom, that's fine. And, and, and there's no unconscious biases operating in terms of social services, government, legislation, um, getting time off work, yada, yada. It's just you're a parent. That's that. What do we call that space? Parenthood? Okay, number three. What are the current barriers facing dads? And what's an acceptable, socially acceptable way of explaining them? Whew. That's a hot button. And I'm going to delve into it a little bit, but not too much. Okay. What are some of the barriers facing dads? Well, if you've been through the family justice system in North America or Europe, you're gonna know there's a systematic bias towards mothers that exist within that system. Moms are awarded custody or parental time and guardianship far more often than dads are. Um, even when there's plenty of evidence to, to support that the dad might be the better parent and better for the kids. Dads have to work harder. There's a whole, whole let's just say an industry built around family justice, divorce, separation, custody, okay? And it's systematic or systemic in its core. It's built into the system and has been for 50 years and so what do we call that? But we have to call it something. And the current language out there, the meta narrative says that it's a systemic bias. Let's call it that. You know what? Instead of saying it's a crappy attitude towards men and it's inherently biased and it's just like punishing, let's not use those words. There's better ways of expressing it, ones that are already there. Let's use it. All we're trying to do is point towards instances, not a great, arc because that's too much of a too much of a, a, a something to tackle at one time we're gonna have to it's it's a social bias and it runs pretty deep but you know what little baby steps okay and the paradigm is shifting and it's already happening but language again comes back to language language is important how we express ourselves and how we do it as proponents of dads dad advocacy personnel we do that in a way that's not incendiary, that's not getting somebody to have a knee-jerk reaction or, or really kind of poking at that bias. We, we may understand that it's there and it's operating. They may understand it, they may not even understand the other party, but let's not poke at it. There's better ways to get people aware of what's going on for them in terms of biases, okay? <clears throat> Terminology. Okay, so I touched on it a little earlier. The meta narrative. It, it's it's the coinage of the, the realm. It's the it's the language that's being used. So if it works and, and, and people understand it, those who are in a position to change or make change, 
can understand that language, why not use it? Okay, we may not like it. And, and maybe it's language that was initially designed to not necessarily support dads, but it's language that exists and, and there's no reason why it can't serve to support dads too. Okay, so let's find a terminology, a codex, so to speak, a little lexicon. I'm throwing the words out there because this is all about dialogue. It's all about language. A code book. So where you can just read and be like, we're this, this, and this, and this. So when you're, you're putting together an argument or a vision statement or whatever you're doing, you're using language that resonates across the board and isn't sounding angry and uh, like you've got your, your pitchfork and torch in hand. Okay? Like I said, it's, this isn't going away. Um, so a cohesive set of lingo becomes catchphrases, right? You start using it long enough and it just enters the language. And once it starts getting used that often, it, you know what, it's like, it's like a cuss word after a while. It's, and now we use it all the time and it's lost its shock value. It just becomes a little piece of spice in your conversation. There's the idea, right? So again, it, it's in everybody's best interest to create these catchphrases, to get together, talk about it, use it and promote it because then it takes some of the stigma away too. It becomes a thing. So, and this is important, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to change unconscious social biases individually and on the social level towards dads to regard dads as not being just babysitters or not knowing what inherently not knowing what they're doing to just another parent equal and valid okay uh destigmatize i covered that so here's here's some other words that i kind of like to use and I'm, I'm suggesting just for you know grist for the mill father dad advocacy the advocacy uh the dad advocate if you ever see this that's great i'm jealous well done father support worker that's currently being used by a an organization that i deal with um it's great it works uh but there's, there's some, you could argue that there's a little bit of a bias there that fathers need support. Some of them do, but not all of us do. We, have, we need support, but that, where we take that and where a lot of people will take that is like, you're weak. And it's, that's not necessarily the case. So if you have a, again, if you have a better suggestion for the, the language, let's agree to it. Um, Systemic bias gets used all the time. It's a thing. It's a real thing. And it exists on, on many different levels. Um, that systemic bias could work for us and work against us in many different junctures in our life. Systemic bias is just something that's a collection, a meta collection of all the things that socially people have a kind of a bias towards. And it just gets so ingrained that you operate out of it without even really thinking about it. It's just, that's how it is. So, and trained professionals make an exercise of letting go of those biases, of trying to be aware of your unconscious biases and conscious biases and not letting them operate. Like when you're, when you're conducting something. So systemic bias is the right word. Uh, socially, a social bias, paradigm shifts. Um, so systemic barriers, okay? So a, a, a social, a systemic bias within the system towards dads, which favors moms getting custody, which favors because there's more women with their children being parents seeking support creates a whole industry around that support. So, which is natural, it is what it is, and, and, and I'm personally really excited that parents get the support they need. However, there's a whole 
that leads to a whole contingent of dads that don't get the support because the, the bias is in place and so on and so forth. So, and that idea kind of stems from the, the ID, the, the, the long held thought that dads aren't really capable. They don't parent. They go out and get a job and they pay their bills and they support and they protect and give a little bit of discipline and play ball, but they don't parent actively. That's not so much the case anymore. And for the growing, the rapidly, giantly underserviced growing population of dads that would like some advocacy and some support and some guidance and soft skills, whatever, are being left behind because of this bias. But we need to address that to the powers that be. Let's do it in language that they understand. It's in our best interest. You know what? And I'm not saying to, none of this is a call to roll over and to say this is fair or to agree upon the language. It is just a protocol I'm suggesting we all kind of get together and help to create that will help facilitate a dialogue. That's it. Okay, and, and really the goal here is to destigmatize the idea of dads getting what they need in their parental journey. Be that soft skills, be that camaraderie, be that uh, a sacred venting space, be that some direction in, in the family social service or promotion as a dadpreneur, okay, and, 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 and then creating a network that way between dads. All of this is great stuff and it helps bring it forward. So yes, see all those names, see all those words I threw out there. Those should enter the conversation. And when we talk about it, it becomes, like I said, destigmatized. It becomes normalized. And you know what? That normalization becomes part of your current thought. It might help change some minds and spur some change. So to recap, these are I have five reasons why, and five reasons why dad's support, dad's advocacy, whatever you want to call it, we should come up with a cool name, needs new language. So let's create it. Throw it at me.